Let's learn the rules now for addition um, when dealing with significant figures. So, um, say we were given these three volume measurements. Um, so, volume one, 37.68 mils. Volume two, 6.71862 mils. And volume three, 108.428 mils. So, um, we could probably by now figure out how many sig figs each one of these has. So let's let's just do that for fun. So this first one, V1, if we counted them, it'd be one, two, three, four, of course. So four sig figs. Just put a little column. Um, V2 here, right? So these ones are pretty easy, I guess, because there's no zeros. I guess the last one has one zero involved, but one, two, three, four, five, six. And the last one, 108, it's got that one captive zero, but remember, of course, captive zeros are always um, significant. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we did that, um, but we don't have to really use that for um, doing this addition of volume. So what's happened here, why do we have all these different significant figures? It's because we've used different measuring devices to um, get these particular measurements. So one of them measured very precisely, the one that measured V2 all the way down to this fifth decimal place. But um, the one that very measured V1 wasn't very precise. It only went down to the second decimal place. But anyways, when we're adding, we can only again use the measurement that's the least precise. If we start using more precise measurements, measurements with higher decimal points, um, when we do that, we start to uh, tell lies, if you will, to, to not really tell the truth about how how precise our measurement really was, our overall measurement. So um, let's go ahead and add these things together. Um, so really what you're going to do is go to the least precise one. So the one with not really the least significant figures, but it's going to be the least numbers after the decimal place. So if you see, um, this one has three numbers after the decimal place. So let's make another column. Uh, numbers after decimal. So this one's got two. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, and this one's got one, two, three. So that's the number you're really looking at. And in fact, when you add these up, the final number you're going to get is going to only have two um, numbers after the decimal place. So uh, let's just go ahead and do it on our calculator. Okay, so just add these things up. Thirty-seven point. 6.8 plus 6.71862 plus 108.428. Okay, so my calculator gives me this number, 152.82662. Okay. So, and then, of course, we want to put mils on there because our, if we've got uh, units on our number, then it's meaningless if we don't have units in our final answer. But anyways, that's not the right final answer. This is incorrect. So, if you wrote that on the exam, you'd probably get something off on it, especially if it was a sig big problem, which this one is. Um, anyways, remember what you're going to do is not really so much worry about the number of sig figs, but you're going to worry when you're adding and subtracting how many numbers after the decimal. So this is for adding and subtracting. And we'll do um, another one, uh, the other example for um, multiplying and dividing in a second. So this is incorrect. We've got to go to 2 after the decimal. So our answer would be 
0.8, and then 6 is higher than 5, so we've got to round up, right? So 8.3, and then put your units on there. Okay, so that's reporting your answer correctly, okay? So if you wrote all of these, you'd be saying you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 after the decimal place. And that's actually reporting to the most precise measurement, not to the least precise measurement. Okay? So make sure you do it this way. So you'll always get the right answer. And this is something you want to remember for actually all of the um, problems that you do, because all the problems that you do in general chemistry or introductory or nursing chemistry or whatever class you're in um, are going to have this associated with it. If you're reporting more precise things, you're actually 